Mega Man 4 is yet another great game in the classic Mega Man series, but it also marks a major turning point in the franchise with the addition of the chargeable Mega Buster. Mega Man 3 had been a critical and commercial success, garnering tons of praise for its incredible graphics and soundtrack, in addition to selling over a million copies. So of course developer Capcom wanted to make a fourth game, and at this point the formula had been firmly established. Mega Man must fight eight new robot masters, each with a unique theme, and upon defeating them he'll gain their power and add it to an increasingly expanding inventory of weapons. Character designer Keiji Inafune was back and had designed a new villain to challenge Mega Man, Russian scientist Dr. Cossack. At the conclusion of Mega Man 3, it seemed like franchise antagonist Dr. Wily had been killed when he was crushed by falling debris, although his trademark flying pod can be seen in the air right before the final credit roll. The mysterious Dr. Kosak seems to have taken some pages right out of Dr. Wily's playbook, but it is nice to see some new characters introduced into the series. Another new character that makes his debut here is Eddie, a small red creature designed by Dr. Light to deliver a random item to Mega Man. Capcom's North American localization team didn't like the name Eddie for some reason, and changed it in the English instruction manual to Flip Top. In fact, Eddie remained Flip Top in all of the North American Mega Man games until Mega Man 7 on the Super Nintendo. Whether you call him Eddie or Flip Top, his addition is a minor change compared to Mega Man 4's most notable new feature, the chargeable Mega Buster. It was a new member of the development team, Hayato Kaji, that created Mega Man's new primary weapon. Heat Man's atomic fire from Mega Man 2 could be charged up for a more powerful attack, but in the original trilogy, Mega Man's pea shooter only has one mode. The chargeable Mega Buster makes a big impact on how you play the game. Instead of charging into battle guns blazing, this new weapon favors a more patient approach. Many fans of the series say they prefer the feel of the earlier games, but the chargeable Mega Buster became the franchise standard and was used in all of the mainline games through Mega Man 8, as well as all of the titles in the Mega Man X spin-off series. As they had done for the previous two games, Capcom held a contest in Japan where fans could submit ideas for the new Robot Masters. The eight winners would receive a gold Rockman 4 Famicom cartridge, which are extremely rare and quite valuable today. This time Inafune says they got great submissions and hardly had to change anything from the fans' designs. Well, except for Toad Man, whose original design is pure nightmare fuel. Of particular note, Dust Man was created by a young Yusuke Murata, a now famous manga artist known for the One Punch Man series. Music has always been a crucial part of the Mega Man experience, and Mega Man 4 features another great soundtrack. This time the score was composed by Mide Fuji, who also did music for some of Capcom's Disney games, Tailspin, and DuckTales 2. Once again the sound was programmed by Yasuaki Fujita, listed in the game's credits under his alias, Bun Bun. Even if you prefer the original trilogy, this is still an excellent Mega Man with all of the elements that make the series great. Modern critics agree, and on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked it at number 95. If you want to play Mega Man 4 today, it's available as part of the Mega Man Legacy Collection on just about every major platform, including Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, 3DS, and Steam. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. 
giant bosses will test your skills, while auto-scrolling platforms will test your reflexes. As usual, there are tons of spike traps, and if you touch them, it's instant death. But what if I told you secret tricks to make some of the most difficult platforming sections easy? What if I showed you easy ways to quickly bypass challenging mini-bosses? And what if I showed you the best way to defeat every boss? Even Dr. Cossack himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, Mega Man 4. Like many things made in the 90s, this game takes place in a future year that would now be in the distant past. Ugh, I remember the Robot Rebellion of 2000 and X like it was yesterday. So which Robot Master should we fight first? I recommend that we go to Toad Man, although Pharaoh Man is a fair choice, and Bright Man would be a more advanced option. The rain here at the beginning of the stage will push Mega Man to the left. I was just jumping there, I was not pushing any directions, and you can see that Mega Man was automatically pushed over to the left. It doesn't seem to affect your slide maneuver, which makes slides feel very fast, but you just want to move slowly through this part, charge up your shot after each enemy is defeated, take out these guys with the umbrellas or they'll throw the umbrellas at you, and when you get to this part where you need to jump from platform to platform, it looks like that's a short distance to jump, but you need to treat it like it's much longer because of that wind effect. If you don't jump from the far right edge of those platforms and hold in the button, you may not make it to the next one. Once we get down here though, the rain has stopped, but now we need to deal with the water current. The water current can push you in different directions, and it will only be pushing you while you're on the ground, so your jumps are unaffected. The water that's coming down from the ceiling can also affect your upward jumps, so if you jump when you're under a waterfall, it will make your jump a little bit shorter. Keep that in mind as you pass through that section, and as we come down here, we're going to hit our first mini-boss. This guy is known as a Bomber Snail. You can only damage the Bomber Snail when its eyes are open, so you'll want to be charging up your Mega Busters so you can get a full powered shot in whenever you have an opportunity. The Bomber Snail has two modes of attack. One is launching bombs out of the top, so if you see that happening, you just want to take a few steps forward. And the other thing it does is shoot the eyes out at you. If it tries to shoot them while you're up in the air, you can just stand under it as they retract. But if it shoots them down towards the ground, you'll need to maneuver away from them. It's a little bit more difficult when we fight this second bomber snail because of the water currents. You don't want to be standing right underneath that waterfall or you won't be able to jump high enough to shoot the snail. If you drop off the sides of the platform here, that is instant death, so your highest priority is to stay towards the middle but out from underneath the waterfall. Take your time here, these jumps can be very difficult when you're contending with the fish robots, especially that one between the two platforms. If you bonk your head on the platform above, you may end up in the spikes below. Head over here and go through the gate and it will be time for our first robot master. This is Toad Man. Toad Man's stage may have been tricky, but the boss himself is a joke. Anytime you see him raise his hands, you just need to shoot him with your buster and that will interrupt him from doing the rain flush attack. Otherwise, if you just stay close to this guy, the only other thing he'll do is jump into the air towards you and you only need to take a few steps towards where he was before to avoid it. Here, I'll allow him to do the rain flush just so you can see what it looks like. But that's all there is to it. 
As long as you can avoid having Toad Man land on you whenever he jumps, and you just hit him whenever he puts his arms up, you should be able to easily finish off the first Robot Master and obtain your first special weapon. The Rain Flush is a very useful weapon and one of the reasons why we wanted to go to Toad Man first. It can often clear an entire screen full of enemies, which can be very useful when you're trying to jump from platform to platform and a bunch of monsters are flying toward you. The Rain Flush is also the most effective weapon against Bright Man, who has one of the most broken sub-weapons in the Mega Man series. However, his stage may be the most difficult one in the game. This is sort of the Quick Man stage of Mega Man 4. There are two types of enemies here, the red bulb blasters, which one shot will turn the lights off, and the green fireworks launchers, which one shot will turn the lights back on. You want to make sure that you have the lights on for that last big jump, because that distance can be difficult to judge while blind. After clearing the first totem pole, charge up another buster shot and jump onto the grasshopper. You'll need to clear another totem pole before you can jump onto the second grasshopper, which will bring you up to the right ledge, where you can climb the ladder and face off with this gumball machine. If you need a health refill before dueling with the almighty gumball, you can use your rush coil adapter, which you do start the game with, to bounce up to the ladder on the right side where there's a health refill waiting for you. Down here, the gumball machine has two modes of attack, the launcher from the top can reach you anywhere in the room, so you need to be careful of those red pellets. The ones that come out of its mouth can only shoot straight forward. Jump up and attack it with fully charged blasts, then climb the ladder on the left side to move forward. As we head over to the right, we're going to slide under an overhang, and then we'll have the option to go down a ladder and grab a very valuable energy tank. This part is optional, so if you don't need the energy tank, don't worry about it. You can just move forward to the right, but it will also give us a chance to practice on these platforms. You can actually just use your rush coil to get over those large gaps, but now may be a good time to test your skills on these platforms. You can also actually just make it over those jumps if you're pretty good, but it's much safer to use the rush coil, especially when you're heading back the other direction. So just bounce over those gaps, make sure you have some rush coil to get up onto the ledge on the left, and then we'll go back up the ladder and proceed over to the right. Over here we have some more of those grasshoppers to deal with, so jump onto the first one and make sure that your Mega Buster is charged because there's going to be more of those totem poles. These two grasshoppers often get overlapped, so make sure that you're on the one that's jumping to the right or you may end up with some problems. Make sure to jump from grasshopper to grasshopper because they will turn around at a certain point and you need to always be on the last one. This one will get you to the ladder. Make sure you jump off of it before it lands in the pit below. Over here you can clear this enemy and then if you need to recharge any of your weapons, now is a good time. I guess we can collect some more rush coil, but rush coil is what's going to get you up there. We probably won't need it for anything, but we might as well collect it when we have the opportunity, because up here, there is some very difficult platforming to deal with. The key to this area is keeping the lights on. Do not shoot the bulb blasters. Whenever you're on these platforms, you want to jump whenever they reach the end of the track. If you shoot the bulb blasters and turn off the lights, you'll still be able to see the platform, but you won't be able to see the track anymore, which will make it much more difficult. Once you get to the end, if you need to turn on the lights, there is a fireworks launcher there. But we have now reached the gate, and it's time to fight Bright Man. Before you go in, charge up your Mega Buster. Bright Man can freeze you in place with his Flash Stopper, but he only does it when he has exactly 16, 8, or 4 health remaining. So if you hit him with one full charged Buster shot before you start launching Rain Flushes, he'll never actually be on any of those health marks, so he'll never freeze you. Then I recommend just trying to stay as far away as possible, which will make it easier to avoid his shots, and just keep launching rain flushes over and over again. The last one will finish him off. 
the weapon that we get from Brightman is nothing short of awesome. You may remember the Time Stopper from Mega Man 2 that we got from Flashman. That weapon has a ton of limitations. Whenever you start using it, it's just continuously depleting. You can't fire your weapon. Well, Brightman's weapon isn't like that at all. Brightman's weapon can freeze enemies in place, but then you can still shoot them using your uncharged buster. Not only that, it works in bursts, so it's not constantly depleting. Pretty sweet. The third boss in our order is Pharaoh Man, and as we begin the stage here, you don't want to get sucked too far under the quicksand, so make sure that you're jumping, but those scorpions that pop out can only be damaged on the lower part. If you shoot the top part where the stinger is, they won't take any damage. See? Hidden at the beginning of Pharaoh Man stage is one of the two optional upgrades, and while they are technically optional, you definitely want to collect this thing because we are going to be using it often. Use the Rush Coil to get over this gap. It's possible to make it without using Rush Coil, but you'll definitely get enough air if you use him and that will bring you over to this hidden section on the right. At the end of it, we're going to find the Balloon Adapter, and the Balloon Adapter works a lot like Platform Number 1 from Mega Man 2. It will create some platforms that you can jump onto, and they will slowly move upwards. This will be very handy, especially in the castle stages later. Collecting the Balloon Adapter will actually move you forward in Pharaoh Man stage and you'll actually skip past where an energy tank was hidden, but we'll have plenty of opportunities to find energy tanks later. That's the only Balloon Adapter. I like to use the Rain Flush here to clear the bubble -o bats, and you want to watch those platform's eyes. As soon as the platform wakes up, it's going to shoot some bullets at you, so be prepared to jump over them. Once you make it over here, you'll drop down on the right side, head through this transitional room, and down here, there's some mummies that appear out of nowhere. Let's try out that flash stopper. You'll notice that it not only freezes the mummy that appeared in place, but also the platforms. Now you need to wait for it to wear off. We don't want to waste all of our flash stopper because we're going to be using it on the boss, but it can be useful down here, although you will need to continue to wait for it to wear off to make sure that the platforms can move. Make sure you take out those mummies or they will continuously respawn over and over again, and then you'll find the gate, and it will be time to fight Pharaoh Man. I said it's time to fight Pharaoh Man, but if we use the flash stopper, it's more like a slaughtering. You may want to try to fight him with the Mega Buster. It's not actually that tough to beat him if you stay close. He'll just mostly do these charged shots, which are easy to avoid. However, if you can catch him flat on the ground and freeze him in place with the Flash Stopper, you can just get up close to him and start mashing the button and watch his energy meter deplete. Pharaoh Man's feet will be firmly planted into the ground and he will have no chance to stop you. The weapon that we get from Pharaoh Man, the Pharaoh Shot, is another great weapon. This one can be charged up, and when you charge it, it'll make a large floating ball above Mega Man's head, and then you can launch that ball in six different directions. You can't shoot it up or down for some reason, but that's fine, because if you actually hit enemies with the ball while it's floating above Mega Man's head, that will damage them and it won't deplete the weapon energy for the Pharaoh shot, allowing you to get a lot of juice out of it for free. Ringman is next on our list, and as his stage opens up, you want to quickly jump to the left to avoid that turret, and then take him out with your Mega Buster. Climb up the ladder, where you'll find two more of those turrets. This time the Rain Flush is a very effective way to remove them, and now is a good time to get used to dealing with these rainbow platforms, which will slowly open up a gap as you step on them. The Flying Saturn Seekers aren't too hard to defeat with your Mega Buster, and up here we can flush away a few more turrets, and then make our way to the top. Carefully cross those rainbow lasers, and up here we're going to face our first mini-boss, the first of four in this stage. 
If you know the secret, you don't actually have to fight this large purple hippo. Just use your pharaoh shot, shoot up and to the right against this supporting pole, and when you get hit, use your invincibility frames to just jump through the hippo and make your way to the right. The flash stopper will not stop the rainbow lasers from moving, but it'll make it easier to deal with the enemies in this section, especially when you're trying to cross over those instant death spikes. Watch out for that electrified enemy that patrols the ground. We do not have a weapon that can destroy it just yet. Here's the second mini boss. Whenever this guy opens up, you want to freeze him with the flash stopper, and that will make it much easier to deal a bunch of damage to its eyes. Down here is the third mini boss, a second one of those purple hippos, and at this point we already know how to deal with this guy. A few pharaoh shots, a quick hit, and you can easily walk through. If we use our rush coil or balloon adapter to get up to that ladder, we'll be able to encounter Eddie for the first time. I like to slide past Eddie, because if you don't like the item that Eddie shows you, as long as you don't collect it, you can continue to make Eddie respawn until you get whatever you want. So if you wanted an energy tank, an extra life, some energy for your weapon, you can just keep making Eddie respawn over and over again until he produces the item you were looking for. You can do that with any Eddie in the game, and you can actually do it in some of the later Mega Man games too, like Mega Man 5 and 6. Whenever you touch these yellow laser platforms, they open up a space that moves from right to left, and it goes a bit faster than the rainbow ones did. So once again, we're using our flash stopper to make the enemies easier to deal with, but as long as you make a big jump to the right across the gap that opens up on these platforms, you should be safe. A quick slide will get you across that one, and down here is the fourth and final mini boss. If you can freeze this one while it's wide open, you can actually just slide under the eyes and walk right past. There's no invisible wall holding you back. And now it's time for our duel with Ringman. Power up your pharaoh shot as you head through the gate. Ringman does a fairly consistent pattern. He throws a boomerang across the ground right as you get in, and then he jumps up in the air and throws another one. He'll run towards you. If you hit him with something when he's running towards you, he may throw a counter boomerang, but usually he'll stop in one place, throw a boomerang, then jump up into the air and throw an air boomerang. It's pretty easy to catch him whenever he lands, and as long as you know that he's going to be throwing one across the ground and then one in the air, it's not too hard to work out how to beat this guy. The Ring Boomerang is another great weapon, and for what it lacks in range, it makes up for with raw power. We're going to be using it against many of the late game bosses, and next up, we call this thing a Roomba in modern times, but in this universe, his name is Dustman. Here at the beginning of Dustman's stage, there's a shield attacker, and we can use our Ring Boomerang to quickly remove him. It actually goes right through the shield and will hit him from behind. Over here, it's a good idea to use your Flash Stopper because those pits that we're jumping over actually have a small enemy that can jump out of them called an up and down. Here's one here. If that guy hits you whenever you're in the air, you'll actually just fall into the pit and instantly die. So it's much safer to use the flash stopper in that area to make sure that you don't come into contact with any of those up and downs. Over here is a crusher enemy. There are several ways to deal with that guy, but the ring boomerang is one of the more effective ones. A few hits will quickly take him out. Over here some platforms will pop up from below. To take out these mushroom copters that are flying through the air, I recommend using the rain flush. There's a small delay after you launch the missile before the rain starts falling, so make sure to shoot your rain flesh off early before you make any jumps. Up this ladder, we'll meet Eddie again. Remember, if you don't collect the item that Eddie gives you, you can just climb back down the ladder and make him respawn, which could give you a different item. Up here, there are some crushers, and there's a bit of a wall that you'll need to blast through. The ring boomerangs are very good at clearing this wall out, but there's no reason to waste your ammo, especially since that's the weapon we want to use on the boss. 
we can simply use our Mega Buster here, and it's unnecessary to clear the very top row of blocks because you can see they won't actually come down and kill you. The most dangerous pistons are over here. Those ones will definitely crush Mega Man, so you want to step under them whenever they're going upwards, clear some of the wall on the right side, and then go back allowing them to go all the way down to the bottom, and then head back through when they're moving upwards again. Over here is another one of those gumball machines. This one's not too hard to beat. Make sure to get a fully charged shot on it before you jump up there. And then we'll climb up this ladder, where we'll meet a new type of hard hat enemy. This one will do a pirouette whenever it wakes up, and you need to use a full powered Mega Buster shot to take it out, otherwise it will require several uncharged shots. There's another one of those crusher enemies over here. Another effective way to deal with him is to use your flash stopper, which will freeze it in place and allow you to easily remove him. As we pass through the gate, it's time to face off with Dustman, so we'll equip our ring boomerangs. The first thing he always does is shoot his dust crusher. You'll want to jump straight up into the air to avoid it so you don't get hit by the four-way shot that comes off of it. After that, you want to stay close to Dustman. He can still do any of his attacks, but whenever you're close, he's more than 60% likely to just jump up in the air like Toadman does. He always has a 25% chance of doing his vacuum suck, which will make him invulnerable, so whenever he's doing that, just try to walk away from him, and as soon as he stops, turn around and hit him with your ring boomerang. Once Dustman is defeated, we'll be able to get his weapon, the Dust Crusher, which is a solid weapon, but it's not one that we're going to be using very frequently against the standard enemies. We will get a lot of use out of the Dust Crusher against some bosses though, including the next boss on our list, Skull Man. Skull Man is a little bit sensitive about his resemblance to Skeletor, so definitely don't mention it if you're hanging out with this guy. Of course, his lair is bone themed, and if we use our Pharaoh shot, we'll easily be able to cut through these cannons at the very beginning. Annoyingly though, they keep respawning whenever you walk off screen, so you may have to clear some of the cannons multiple times. It's pretty cool that you don't have to use any weapon energy if you hit an enemy with the Pharaoh shot while it's floating over your head, and if you don't actually kill the enemy with the floating shot, it'll disappear, but you'll still be able to shoot off a fully charged blast without charging up another one. This guy is called a Skeleton Joe, and I suppose he may be related to the Sniper Joe enemies from the other Mega Man games. He's very weak against the Flash Stopper, which will stop him from shielding himself by folding into a pile of bones. The rain flush is very good in this area. You don't have to worry about which direction it hits those shield attackers. It kills them either way. And we'll be able to climb up this ladder, which will take us to another area where we'll meet up with Eddie. Yeah, thanks Eddie. We could use another recharge on our rain flush. If you're in a big hurry to get through this stage, you can just keep climbing up the ladder. But if you want to collect an energy tank, you can head over here to the right. There's also a nice health refill up here at the top, so we'll use our Rain Flush to clear these shield attackers, and then we can use our Balloon Adapter to float up and grab the E-Tank. An interesting thing that you can try here is if you use the Flash Stopper, you can actually shoot through the shield on these shield attackers. Nice! Once you have the E-Tank, you can head back to the ladder and keep making your way up, there are actually two energy tanks hidden here in Skull Man stage, and the second one isn't really hidden that much at all. You'll see it right there. To collect it, we need to walk past it and then double back to the left. Don't just try to jump down there and curve your jump so that you'll land on the platform. You'll miss it and die. This can be a difficult jump, but if we use our balloon platform, you'll make it easily. There you go clear out a few of these worms, and then we'll simply be able to walk off the edge and collect the second energy tank. You can actually revisit levels that you've already finished, so if you want to keep collecting energy tanks, you can re-enter Skullman stage as many times as you want, 
Although nine is the most energy tanks Mega Man can hold at one time. As we climb down this ladder, we'll make our way to the final part of the stage. Over here, there are more of those Skeleton Joe enemies, and we know that the Flash Stopper is very good for dealing with them. If you're low on Flash Stopper, you want to hit them with fully charged Mega Buster shots. Otherwise, these guys collapse into a pile of bones, and you'll have to wait until they get back up to shoot them again. And once we get through the gate, it will be time to face Skull Man. We're going to use the Dust Crusher, but there's a very odd thing about Skull Man. He has a defensive ability, so he's a bit of a pacifist. If you just stand here, you can have a nice little staring contest with him. He will only move if you press left, right, or the B button. If you press left or right, he'll start doing his shooting attack. He'll shoot three bullets. And if you press the B button, he will jump at you and then use the skull barrier. He never does the same attack three times in a row. So you can get him to do two shooting attacks and then prepare for the barrier. After the barrier, he'll always run at you. So be ready to jump over him and slide away so that you can start dodging the bullets again. If you understand how Skull Man works, he's actually pretty easy to defeat. At first glance, it looks like the Skull Barrier would be an upgrade compared to the Leaf Shield from Mega Man 2 because you can actually move around while you're using it. But in practice, it's actually much worse. The Skull Barrier will only prevent one hit and then you'll have to activate it again. So it's not terribly practical, but we will be able to weaponize it against the next boss, Dive Man. I find Dive Man's water-themed stage to be a lot easier than Toad Man's, and you may recall that we couldn't kill those electrified Gary Obi enemies before, but now that we have the Ring Boomerang, we can. You don't want to get knocked into the spikes by a fish robot, so use your Flash Stopper here, clear the enemies, and make your way to the right where you'll need to slide under this overhang, and on the other side after you jump over some spikes, you'll notice that there are hard hat enemies here that have snorkels. I kinda thought that these hard hat guys were Dr. Wily's trademark enemy, but maybe this new doctor likes the exact same design? Something kinda suspicious going on here. Hmm. Well, in any case, in the next room, there's a mini-boss for us to fight, called a Moby. And this large mechanical whale can be easily defeated by freezing him in place with the Flash Stopper. If you freeze him fast enough, he won't even appear. We can keep using our Flash Stopper in this room to make our way to the ladder. And up here, we'll meet up with Eddie again, who gave us an energy tank this time. Thanks, Eddie. Of course, we know we can manipulate Eddie to get whatever we want by not getting his item, but it is nice when he just gives you something that you like on the first try. As we drop down into this next watery section, we can try out the Rush Marine adapter. The Rush Marine can allow Mega Man to easily get through the water, and if you go all the way up to the top of the screen and let the water drop out from under you, you can even sort of fly a little bit over these obstacles. Pretty neat. Another neat trick you can do is using the balloon platforms against this Moby mini-boss. If you can jump high enough, you can actually get over the boss and you won't have to fight him at all. There's a very suspicious looking pit right here that you should drop into, being careful to avoid the spikes, but you should only have to make one tiny move to the right to be able to get around them. And at the bottom, we'll find the second of our two optional upgrades, the wire adapter. I don't find the wire adapter to be quite as useful as the balloon adapter, but it's another optional item that you won't want to miss because we will be using it quite a bit in the late game stages. After you get the wire, you'll actually be transported back a little bit, and we'll have to face off with this second Moby again, of course. We know how to get around this guy. A few balloon platforms or maybe some flash stopper, and that's all it takes. Over here we can use our Rush Marine again. Stay low to get underneath those spikes, and whenever you get close to those exploding mines, you'll trigger them, and then if you just back off a little bit, they'll explode harmlessly and you can move forward. 
head over here to the right. Watch out for these mines, just kind of robo-marine around them. And you'll be able to drop down into the gate, and it'll be time to face off with Dive Man. Dive Man does a very consistent pattern. You may want to try to get a quick Mega Buster shot in as soon as you enter the door because he's going to charge right at you as soon as you come in. And then you will want to switch over to the Skull Barrier. The Skull Barrier does a ton of damage, but you don't want to actually touch the boss. You just want to hit him with the edge of the barrier. He always does the same pattern whenever you're close to him. He'll do three headfirst charge attacks and then one dive missile, and then he'll repeat that again. So as long as you stay close to the boss, you'll know exactly what he's going to do, and you'll be able to counter him with the Skull Barrier. With Dive Man defeated, we'll be able to get the Dive Missiles, which are a nice little weapon that can home in on enemies. A homing missile can be very handy when you're jumping from platform to platform and need to shoot down flying enemies that are closing in on you. The last boss is Drill Man, and much like his cousin Crash Man, he has drills for hands, which is awesome whenever you want to bore through a wall, but absolutely awful for everything else. You remember all of the scars that Edward Scissorhands had on his face? Well, imagine what his face would have looked like if he had drills. Up here, there's another one of those crusher enemies. We know that the flash topper is very effective against them, and if you catch him in midair, you can just slide right underneath. Up here, more hard hat enemies, and these ones aren't even a very new variety. They just pop up and shoot at you, just like the classic ones. Hmm. As you come down this ladder, there's some spikes that you'll want to jump over, and we can use the rain flush to quickly clear these bubble bats. There's a bit of health if you need it. Carefully drop down to the platforms below and make your way down here. It's not actually that difficult to get this extra life, although you don't want to waste it by jumping back into the spikes as you jump out of there. Down here, there's some more of those mushroom copters. Use the rain flush to take them out and use some small, shallow tap jumps to get over the spikes so you don't hit the ones up above. Over here, you'll climb up the ladder, and there are a few of these turrets in this room which can be easily cleared using the rain flush. They normally can't be damaged when they're closed, but the rain flush sure doesn't care. There's more than one way to grab this energy tank, but we just got the wire adapter, so now's a good time to put it to use. You can only shoot it straight up, and whenever you're attached to the ceiling, you just need to release the button and kind of hold over to the left to drop over to the platform with the E-Tank. In this room, we can use our flash stopper to easily get underneath these boulder producers, but that's not the only hazard in here. It seems like the rest of the stage hasn't been turned on yet, so you need to touch these switches to make the platforms appear. You'll even need to do a bit of a leap of faith to hit that third one, and make sure to hit this fourth switch before jumping down to the bottom. Once you pass through the gate, it'll be time to face off with the eighth and final of the Robot Masters. This guy is Drill Man. Drill Man always starts out the fight by jumping into the air, flipping upside down, and drilling down into the ground. When he's upside down, he's mostly invulnerable, except against the rain flush, which can do minor damage. He'll wait about three and a half seconds to pop out of the ground, so if you count about one, two, three in your head and then start sliding, you should be able to avoid him. The dive missiles will deal the most damage to Drill Man, but because of the homing technology, the best way to shoot them at the boss is to jump and shoot them in the air. If you shoot your dive missile out at the same time that Drill Man shoots one of his bombs, he'll actually block your missile, but if you're shooting the missiles in the air, they'll go right over his drill bombs and hit their intended target. The final sub-weapon in our inventory is the Drill Bomb. We'll mostly be using drill bombs to get through certain types of walls, and normally whenever you shoot a drill bomb it will explode on contact, but if you press the B button again while the bomb is in mid-air, you can make it detonate early. 
We'll also get the Rush Jet Adapter, which is not as good as it was in Mega Man 3, but we'll certainly be using it here in the first Dr. Cossack stage. There are four stages to fight through here, so if you need some energy tanks before you come in here, you may want to stock up on them in Skullman stage, which you can repeat as many times as you need to. I recommend only getting up to eight energy tanks though, because we'll be able to get the ninth one right here at the very beginning. If you just walk over to the left, you'll find that there's an energy tank hidden in the snow. Nice. Unlike the previous stages, whenever you'd beat a boss, you would get all of your sub-weapons refilled. That does not happen now that we're in the castle levels. So we need to be a little bit more conservative with our sub-weapons, and maybe rely a little bit more on the Mega Buster. Of course, if you do lose all of your lives and have to continue, whenever you restart the current level, you will have all of your sub-weapons refilled. So if you ever get way too low, that is an option. As we climb this ladder, we'll hit one of those small transitional rooms, and these enemies are pretty easy to clear with our Mega Buster, so I don't recommend using any good weapons against them. Up here, though, we'll find some more of those Skeleton Joe enemies. Remember that a full-powered shot of the Mega Buster will take them out, but you still will want to use your Flash Stopper here, because as you cross over those gaps, there are more of those up and down enemies that can pop out, and if they hit you in mid-air, you'll probably fall off and die. Down here we can collect some weapon energy. Don't slide across at the bottom, you might fall off and die. And if you just jump backwards, you can actually despawn the Skeleton Joe at the very end here. But watch out for that up and down enemy that pops out of the pit. The easiest way to get up onto these icy platforms is to use your balloon adapter. Just place a balloon between each two icy platforms and you'll easily be able to make it up to the next one. We'll use another balloon here and then jump over to the ladder. Make sure to hold up when you get near the ladder to grab it. If you need some weapon energy, you want to climb up this first ladder. But if you don't, we can just use Rush Jet whenever you see those things close and fly it over to the last ladder, which we can climb up to the top where we'll find the boss's room. Don't mess around with this crusher enemy. You don't want to take any damage right before the boss. And if you die on this boss, you'll be sent back to the last checkpoint, not to this gate. So make sure to use an energy tank if you get low on health in here. This boss's name is Mothrea, and it has a very obvious weak point. It's the flashing red circle where the mouth would be. Use your ring boomerangs and try to keep some distance between you and the boss. Occasionally it will stop to drill a hole in the ground and it can drill enough holes so that you could fall through and die. But if you're good with the ring boomerangs, you should be able to take this guy out long before that ever becomes a problem. Once Mothrea has been defeated, we will teleport out of there and it'll be time for Cossack Castle Part 2. This second Dr. Cossack stage is not actually that difficult. As long as you have a decent charge on your rush jet, you should be in good shape. As we start out here, you have two ladders to choose from. I recommend going on the right ladder, and make sure to climb it all the way to the top. Do not hesitate, or you'll get hit by that enemy. Once you're up here, you want to lure that enemy out and shoot it, and then just slide under and head over to the ladder in the upper left. We can use this weapon energy to refill our ring boomerang or any weapon that you're low on. Make sure that you have a decent supply of rush jet though, because we're about to use it right over here. This is where we'll turn on the jet. Rush jet is a lot harder to maneuver in this game, so you want to kind of slowly move them upwards. You can collect some weapon energy as you're flying. And if it doesn't look like you're going to get up above that green platform, you may need to jump off the jet. Fly it over to the ladder, and we can take out that Gary Obi enemy using drill bombs or ring boomerangs. Ring boomerangs only take one to take it out, while you'll need two drill bombs, but either weapon can work. It's easy to use the balloon adapter to get across here, or you can use rush jet again. You got a number of options. The balloons are very good right here though. You can use them to just get straight up to the ladder. Nice. 
We can use a dive missile to take out this bubble o bat. And while there is a number of ways to get up onto this next platform, we might as well use the wire adapter when we can to save weapon energy for other items. Like the balloon adapter, which is far more useful. We'll use the wire again, attach to the ceiling and head over to the right. Once we're over here, Toadman's Rain Flush is a very effective way to clear these enemies. And if you need it, you can use the wire to come up here and collect some health. To be extra safe, you may want to use your Rust Jet here to get over these spikes. It's possible to make that jump, but if you mess it up, you could end up dead. It's just not worth it. If you jump up here, you can lure these bad guys into a bad position for them. And that one will fall down into the bottom, where he'll be trapped, and then you can just jump up to the ladder and climb up to here. Make your way up this ladder and then climb back down. You want to jump off right at that point to be able to get over into this area, where you'll be able to collect a bunch of loot. You'll need to do a few tricky jumps to get up to where the energy tank is, but there's no enemies pressuring you here, so just keep trying it until you get up there. Use a drill bomb to get through the wall, collect all the items, and then you'll just want to slide over to the ladder and climb up to the next room. And here we can collect another extra life using our wire adapter before we head through the gate to the boss. Make sure those spikes are in the upward position before you use the wire so you don't get clipped on your way up. And when you head over into here, you'll want to equip your dust crusher because the next boss is the square machine. This boss is segmented into three parts and whenever it's moving fast, you'll want to slide under the bottom part but when it moves slow at this particular speed, you want to jump up into the middle because the red weak point is going to appear. So we're going to slide under it when it's moving fast. So just slide and slide again. And when you notice that it's moving slow, like it is now, that's when you want to get up into the middle and you want to stand right under the red spot until it fires at you. Then I jump over onto the right platform, ride it up, shoot the red vulnerable point, drop down, jump onto the left platform, which I'll ride up and shoot it again. You can get more shots than that in each cycle, but that is the safest way to do it. So we start in the middle, right platform, shoot, drop, left platform, shoot. If you get those two hits, then you can start moving down to the bottom where you'll want to avoid the parts of the square machine again. So just follow the simple pattern and you'll stay safe. When it's moving fast, slide under. When it's moving slow, get up into the middle. Then stay middle, right platform, shoot, left platform, shoot. And it won't be long before this boss is defeated and it will be time to teleport out of here. And we can make our way to Cossack Castle, part three. The next stage here is an NES favorite an auto-scroller. Yay! Don't be too worried though, there is a trick that's going to make it way easier for us since we have the wire adapter. You'll notice the stage start to scroll immediately as it begins. There are some electrical enemies that patrol these platforms. You can't kill those, so just try to avoid them and make your way across this first area. Once you get down here though, drop below this turret, and if we use the wire to attach to the platform below it, just keep holding on, don't let go. The scroll will push Mega Man to the right and then whoop, up into the sky, where you'll float over all of this nonsense and you won't have to deal with any of it. We're just going to keep holding on until we get all the way to the right side where you're going to see a big crusher enemy and there will be a ladder that leads up to the next area. Once we get over there, we're going to switch off of the wire and we'll switch over to our flash stopper. That's optional, you don't have to switch to the flash stopper, but we're going to eventually fall down on the right side and I would rather that we didn't fall right on top of that crusher enemy so I like to try to freeze him over on the left. It does take a moment to fall out of the sky, so just kind of hang out here. I usually kind of mash some buttons. I'm not sure if it helps, 
but eventually you'll fall down on the right side and you'll be able to climb the ladder up to the next part. Use your ring boomerangs or drill bombs to take out the Gary Obi enemies that patrol those platforms, and when you climb up here, we're going to hit another auto-scrolling section, although I don't recommend using the wire this time. You may end up stuck at the end of the stage, and you'll softlock the game, which will force you to reset. Whenever you cross those small yellow platforms, they'll begin to drop whenever Mega Man is standing on them, but as soon as you jump, they will quickly float up into the sky, so by jumping straight up on them, you'll be able to move them up to where they need to be. Use your dive missiles to take out the Saturn Seekers, and then once the way is clear, you can jump onto the falling yellow platforms. So jump onto the platforms, jump straight up into the air so that they'll float upwards instead of downwards, and just keep taking out any Saturn Seekers you see, so that when you get to this last one, you can ride it all the way to the bottom, and then slide into this area, where we can use the balloon adapter to grab another energy tank, so just ride it up and slide in, and then we'll enter the gate, where we'll face off with the next boss, the Cockroach Twins. The Twins are actually weak against the Pharaoh shot, and because of the way the room is designed, you'll actually be able to hit them with the charged shot above your head pretty often. So you can just bump it into that guy, and then if you return to the menu, you'll be able to charge up another Pharaoh shot, and you can see that by doing it this way, we didn't spend any of our weapon energy. Pretty nice. So just keep hitting it with the charged balls, and then going back to the menu. If you see an opportunity to hit one of these guys by throwing a Pharaoh shot, then go for it especially when the one comes in from the bottom. He will come back up to the top though, and you'll be able to hit him again with a charged ball above your head, but you may need to actually fire a few shots off to take out the second boss. Either way, as long as you don't fall down into the spikes, you shouldn't have any problem defeating the Cockroach Twins. But there is one thing I want to warn you about. There's no good reason to be using the Flash Stopper in this fight, but if you do finish the boss using that weapon, you will be stuck here in a soft lock. The game will not send you on to the next stage. It's like we were messing around with the time stone. All you can do is jump into the spikes and die. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. So yeah, don't use the flash stopper in the cockroach twins fight and you will be fine. Of course, at least you can jump into the spikes to get out of it, but you will have to fight the boss again if you do that. Well, we've done it. We've reached the fourth and final part of the castle. The final battle with Dr. Cossack is imminent. This stage is pretty short and easy. At the very beginning, there's some weapon energy to be grabbed, so fill up anything that you're low on. We're going to be using the dust crusher for the boss here, so if you're low on that, make it a priority. Then we'll grab a couple dust crushers, and then drop down this shaft. Down here we can use our toad rain flush to clear some turrets, and there's another energy tank that we can grab by using some drill bomb. That will open up the wall, we can grab the energy tank, and then we'll make our way down here where there's another one of those crusher enemies, and we certainly know what to do about that guy. Just freeze him in place, and if you need some health, you can use the wire adapter to quickly get up to where that health is. Certainly, there's more than one way to get up there, but the wire is probably the best. And we'll just climb up these ladders, where the path actually splits in two. You'll want to use the wire and a drill bomb to take this path to the right, but this path includes an energy tank and is much easier than the other path, so it's really a no-brainer. There aren't that many enemies to deal with, just a few of these slinkies, which can be very easily defeated using your ring boomerangs, or just shoot them with the Mega Buster. And here you'll see where the other path connects. We're just going to pass right underneath that. And if you come up to the top here, there's some health that you can pick up, but watch out for that shield attacker. You can use your ring boomerangs or maybe a rain flush to finish him off. 
and then you'll need to use a drill bomb at the end if you want to collect that health. Once you have it, you can drop down. We're just going to cut through this room and head over to the right. There is some weapon energy up in the top that you can grab using the wire. It's pretty easy to get up there using it. So we'll grab some more ring boomerangs and then just head over to the right where we're going to find the gate that leads to the boss. Well, it's all been building up to this, but this boss is not all that difficult. As soon as you get in here, you want to jump up on that platform on the right side and try to get a few cheap shots in on Dr. Cossack right at the beginning. You can usually get three or four. Then if you just head over to the left side, you can lure him over there, and when you jump back up on the right platform, you should be able to score a few hits as he comes back to the right side. So one, two, three, and then I like to slide under and hit him one more time as I head back to the left. And you're just going to do this a few times and you should be able to easily defeat the doctor. You don't have to actually finish him. Whenever the doctor gets to critical health, Proto Man will interrupt the battle and return his missing daughter. Oh, so Dr. Wily took her hostage and forced him to fight us. Hmm. And then it seems that Proto Man betrayed Dr. Wily? I mean, come on, Proto Man was always on our side. I don't think anybody is surprised to see that Dr. Wily was behind this whole scheme, but how did this ransom plan work anyway? So he kidnapped Dr. Cossack's daughter and then he calls him and says, What? We have your daughter? Oh no. Uh, how much money do you need? Do you want state secrets? Oh no, we don't want any of that. We need you to build eight themed robots to fight Mega Man with. They should all be of about a similar size. We can send over some examples if you need ideas. Yeah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But now it's time to challenge the first level of Dr. Wily's Skull Castle. Don't make the mistake in thinking that you can stop the game here and your password will take you back to Skull Castle. It definitely will not. Your password will take you back to the first level of Cossack Castle and you will be very disappointed. This is sort of a hard hat themed level, and we can use the rain flush to clear all of the standard hard hats on this screen, but the spinning EX models will take a few more hits to finish off. There's mostly standard models up here, so the rain flush will once again clear them out. It doesn't even matter if they don't have their hat up, the rain flush can go right through the shield. A couple more standard models will greet you there, but down here there's a few more of the spinning EX ones, so I recommend fully charging your Mega Buster to deal with them. There's one more over on the other side of these yellow platforms. Take him out, and the last one is just a standard hard hat so you can hit him with a single blast from your Buster, or pretty much any other weapon. Grab some weapon energy as you drop down. Stay to the right to avoid the spikes at the bottom, and we haven't encountered a whole lot of water here in the castle levels, so now's a great time to bust out our Rush Marine. You still want to avoid those spikes, but this rush will make it a lot easier to navigate this area. Over here though, you need to switch him off. If you stay moving forward with Rush, you will hit those spikes and you will die. Once you're down here, you can switch back on to Rush Marine, no problem but just make sure you turn it off during that very small section and you'll be fine. At the top of this next ladder we'll find some Yoku blocks. It wouldn't be a Mega Man game without Yoku blocks, but these ones are very easy to avoid. You can just use the balloon adapter to get right up to the ladder, and you can take out that Gary Obi enemy down in the bottom. Over in this room we can use the Rush Jet to cross over these spikes and then we'll just use our wire adapter to get up to the top. Yeah, we don't really need to mess around with any of the Yoku blocks in this game, and that's the last time they're going to appear. There's a few more hard hats in this area, which can be easily rain flushed away or just quickly finished off with your Mega Buster, and there's some weapon energy that we can pick up, so make sure to refill any weapons that are low. And when we come over to the right, there's actually an energy tank we can pick up, although right now we actually have the full nine energy tanks. So if you had the full nine, you can just use an energy tank now to refill whatever health you need, 
and then pick that one up to get right back up to nine. You'll want to have as much health as you can when you come through this gate, because it's time to fight the next boss, the Metal Daddy. Equip your ring boomerangs, and since this was the hard hat themed level, of course the Metal Daddy is a giant hard hat. Use your boomerangs to hit it whenever it wakes up. It'll jump into the air, and whenever the boss lands, it will shake the ground, which will freeze Mega Man in place for a short moment, making him very vulnerable to the small hard hats that'll drop out of the sky. Ideally, you want to be off the ground whenever the boss lands, but if you need to slide under him so that he doesn't land on you, it can be hard to be in the air. Either way, use your boomerangs to clear the small hard hats whenever the big one is down, and whenever he opens up, just keep beating him down with those boomerangs, and eventually he'll be defeated, and we'll be off to Dr. Wily's Skull Castle, Part 2. Where does Dr. Wily get the funding to build these elaborate castles full of traps? Is he selling dust crushers and dive missiles to, like, African warlords or something in exchange for blood diamonds? I don't know. It's probably actually worse than that. There are a few paths to choose from here, but if you don't take this one, it will probably end poorly. Carefully jump over the spikes to the ladder. Make your way down here where you can drop onto this platform and we can use our flash stopper to make sure that we don't get bumped off by those enemies. And over here, I recommend using the Balloon Adapter if you want to collect that energy tank. We actually already have the maximum 9 energy tanks, but if you don't, don't miss that good opportunity to grab another one. Skull Castle Stage 2 is the last traditional stage in the game. The ones after this are pretty much just a boss gauntlet and a boss fight. So feel free to use any of your platforming assistance items like Rush Jet, the Balloon Adapter, any of that kind of stuff. You're not going to need it after this one. Up here we can meet up with Eddie for one last time. We'll put on our Ring Boomerangs in case he gives us weapon energy, which he did. Thanks Eddie. And this time we want to take the ladder on the right side, the one on the left. It's a trap. These green worm enemies aren't very dangerous, so just take them out with your Mega Buster and climb up the ladder on the left side. Up at the top, there's going to be more of those mummy enemies from the Pharaoh Man stage, and you may recall from there that they'll just keep coming back if you don't kill them. So you'll want to shoot through those mummies and then slide under the heads that they shoot at you. If you need to get some health back, there's a little bit up at the top but we actually don't need it right now, so we're just going to climb this ladder on the right side and move on. Clear the three bubble -o bats in this room, and once they're all gone, we're going to use our wire attachment to get up to the ladder on the left side. You can take either ladder here, but the one over here on the left is a bit safer. You just need to slide over to the ladder and hold up, and you won't have to deal with that enemy up at the top. Over here are a few more enemies that actually won't be able to get you if you just shoot them from far away. That guy won't be able to get you from there, so just hit him with the Mega Buster, and then climb up the ladder, where we will reach the last part of the stage. This gumball guy can't reach you from over here, so just keep shooting him with your Mega Buster, and then carefully cross over the platforms. This second gumball machine can damage you though, so I recommend using its weakness, the Drill Bombs, to quickly remove it. And then there's the gate that leads to the boss. This boss is known as the Octopus Furnace. Once again, the Ring Boomerang is the weapon of choice, and there's a few of these moving platforms that you can use to get up to the vulnerable point in the boss's forehead, but you can actually just skip that platform on the left because if you jump to the leftmost edge of the platform that the boss is sitting on, you can use that to get up to the platform on the right. You can also just jump onto that edge and then jump straight up to hit the boss in the forehead from there. You'll want to try to avoid the cannonballs that the boss is launching. If you have to jump off of the platform as it's moving around to avoid them, do that, because it's not too hard to get back up there. And once the octopus furnace is all burnt out, We'll be on to Skull Castle Stage 3. This one is the Boss Gauntlet. 
After Skull Castle flashes this time, we'll see that the path leads to the skull, meaning that this time, the boss will be Dr. Wily himself. But before we get to that, we want to restore some of our weapon energies. We're going to be fighting all eight robot masters again, so make sure to fill up any weapons that are low. You'll also need to make sure that you have extra ring boomerangs and drill bombs for the final boss of this stage. Once you're all ready to go, drop down here. There's a very short stage that you need to pass through before we get to the capsule room. So just try to keep your health high, collect any items that you see, and there will be a little bit more weapon energy that you can pick up in this room. So use it to collect whatever you might need and fill up any weapons that are low. And that's gonna be the last of the weapon energy up here, so once you're all filled up, drop down into this room, take out a few of these enemies using your Mega Buster so that we don't waste any of our good weapons, and then you're going to drop down to one more room that has a nice big health refill in it, and you can easily just go right past that shield attacker and through the gate. On the other side of the gate, there's not a boss, but a capsule teleporter. Once you come through, drop down here, and we will have entered the capsule room. This is always my favorite part of the game. It's time to challenge the eight robot masters again, and in the upper left corner, we can start with Drillman. Drillman's one of the more dangerous bosses, so I like to start up here first. If we do take some damage from Drillman and are low on health, then we can go to one of the easier bosses after fighting this guy, you'll be able to get a nice big health refill after each boss you kill, so if you can kill one of the bosses while taking minimal damage, you'll be able to recover some health that you've lost. We know how to beat Drillman at this point. Remember that you want to jump when you're shooting the dive missiles so that they don't get countered by the drill bombs. And whenever he's underground, wait three seconds and then start sliding. And just remember that whenever you finish off any of the bosses in the capsule room, you don't want to be standing right on the exit, or you may not be able to pick up that health refill that they drop. We still have full health after fighting Drillman, so we'll drop down and fight Skullman next. Remember that whenever you're fighting Skullman, he won't move unless you move first. So keep that in mind. If you move left or right, you'll trigger the shooting attack, which will make it easier to land some dust crushers, but he will do the skull barrier eventually, so wait for him to do it. As soon as it drops, you can hit him again, but he will be charging towards you. You'll need to jump over him and finish him off with a few more dusts. Next, let's head over and fight Dive Man. Just like the previous time, we're going to use our skull barrier, and whenever Dive Man is close to you, he will always do the same pattern. Three headfirst charges, followed by one dive missile. So we'll want to exploit that pattern and use our Skull Barrier to defeat him. The Skull Barrier can't usually be used as a weapon, but it actually can damage Bright Man, and it does a decent amount of damage to him. If you do want to hit Bright Man with the Skull Barrier, make sure to hit him with an odd number of them. If you only hit him with two Skull Barrier hits, whenever you start launching the Rain Flush, he'll actually hit that 16, 8, and 4 mark, which will cause him to do the Flash Stopper. You don't really want this guy to do the Flash Stopper, so you want to make sure that you start out the battle either with a full shot from your Mega Buster, or one or three Skull Barrier hits. If you took any damage, now could be a good time to fight Toad Man, who is obviously one of the easier bosses. The Drill Bombs are the best weapon against Toad Man, but Toad Man is actually very easy to defeat with just your Mega Buster, and you will be using the Drill Bombs on the boss of this stage, so if you want to be very conservative and save your Drill Bombs for the end, you may want to use the Mega Buster against Toad Man. Next, we'll duel with Dust Man. He always starts the battle with his Dust Crusher, jump straight up to avoid it, and if we stay close to him, he is 63% likely to just do his jumping attack, although he has a 25% chance of doing this vacuum suck attack. Either way, if he's just jumping around, he'll be very easy to damage, and if he does the vacuum suck attack, it's not too hard to avoid it. 
so just kind of watch out for those two attacks, hit him with the ring boomerangs when you can, and Dustman will go down easily. There's only two more capsules left. Pharaoh Man is one of the easiest bosses because of the way we can deal with him using the Flash Stopper, so we'll take on Ring Man first. If you were very low on health, you'd probably want to start with Pharaoh Man instead, but we're going to use our Pharaoh shot against this guy. Remember, he likes to shoot his boomerang across the ground, then jump up in the air and shoot another one. Once he's defeated, there's only one more boss, and we're going to use our Flash Stopper to make short work of Pharaoh Man. Try to stop him when he's flat on the ground, that will make it a lot easier to get hits on him. There we go. And we can actually just kind of back up so that that little ball won't hit us. If you do run out of your Flash Stopper, the Dust Crusher is also a pretty good weapon against Pharaoh Man, so you can switch over to that to get the last few hits. I think we're gonna have enough Flash Stopper here, although it might be close. Yep, we're out, but... Well, that's the end of Pharaoh Man, and with all eight bosses defeated, a new capsule will appear, and this one contains Dr. Wily's Skull Machine. The Skull Machine has two forms with two full bars of health, but the first one is very, very easy to beat. You just want to walk very close to the front of the mouth, wait for it to shoot three fireballs, then jump up and hit it with a ring boomerang. If you stand right here, none of the fireballs will hit you, and as long as you wait until the third one is out of the way, you should be able to easily clear this first form without taking a single hit. Now when it gets down to its last point of energy, you may want to switch over to the drill bombs early because you'll actually do more damage on your first hit if the last hit of the first form was a drill bomb. But yeah, drill bombs are what you're going to use here on the second form. But it's not as easy as just jumping and shooting. You need to press the B button again to detonate the bomb in midair so that the explosion will hit the boss. If you don't detonate the bombs in midair, they will simply bounce off of Wily's ship and deal no damage, so make sure that you are detonating those bombs early. Once the Skull Machine is defeated, Dr. Wily will escape, but I did want to point out one thing that you can do here, although it is not recommended. Uh, if you do run out of drill bombs, your fully charged Mega Buster can damage this boss, but it's much harder. And if you use your Rain Flush right now as Dr. Wily flies away, you'll actually kill him, and that will soft lock the game. We can't kill Dr. Wily now, we got at least seven more sequels to do. If you do use the Rain Flush there, you will have to reset the game and start all over at your last password. Assuming you didn't do that, we'll be able to move on to the second skull. And this is the final stage in the game. There are no power-ups waiting for you here at the beginning of the last stage, but there are some of those green worm enemies down here that you could farm for weapon energy if you need it. You will need a decent amount of Pharaoh Shot to be able to beat the final boss, and if your Pharaoh Shot is low, make sure to fill it up before you go in here or this will probably end in disaster. This time we're going to be fighting Dr. Wily in his capsule, and the room is very dark so you're not going to be able to see him most of the time. Four energy balls will come together and as soon as they do, the room will flash and you'll be able to see where Wily is hiding, at which point you can shoot your Pharaoh shot at him, or you can try to jump into him with it, which will get you a free hit. Either way, you're going to need to do several hits with your full Pharaoh shot to defeat this guy, but there is one other weapon you can damage him with, and that other weapon is the Ring Boomerang, so I'll switch over to it just to show you. The problem with Ring Boomerang is it not only deals minimal damage, but he has to appear right on your level for you to be able to hit him. The best advice I can give you is to not run out of your Pharaoh shot. If you have to use Ring Boomerangs to finish this guy off, then maybe you can do it to get a few hits, but it will be very, very hard to do significant damage with those. And with that, we've done it! 
We've beaten Mega Man 4. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Skull Castle flickers a few times as Dr. Wily's smoking pod floats out of the top. Mega Man quickly teleports away, but it seems that Wily has flipped a self destruct mechanism and Skull Castle is detonated, leaving a skull shaped mushroom cloud in its wake. That definitely is not going to be good for the local environment, so if you are vacationing in that area, I don't recommend that you drink any of the water and definitely do not eat any fish that you might catch. After that, Mega Man catches a train. He takes off his helmet and lets his hair blow in the breeze as the sun sets quietly in the background. I don't think it's a very good idea to ride on top of a train, especially if you end up going through some kind of tunnel. But as Mega Man rides on top and the train brings him back to his creator, Dr. Light, he can reflect on what happened here at the end. This time, Dr. Wily definitely got away alive, so it's only a matter of time before eight more robot masters are unleashed, and the peace is threatened once again. How many more Skull Castles will we have to destroy before Dr. Wily finally learns his lesson? That's a question that we may never know the answer to. So for now, all Mega Man can do is rest. For a fighting robot like Mega Man, the war never actually ends. So fight Mega Man. Fight for everlasting peace. As the game runs the secondary set of credits, the music that it plays is a remixed version of the ending theme from Mega Man 2, which is just as awesome here as it was in that game. So take a few moments to soak it in and enjoy it. You've definitely earned it. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Mega Man 4 and put an end to Dr. Wily's evil schemes once more. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more harebrained kidnapping plots hatched by evil mad scientists for us to thwart. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.